Today I'm going to show you how to reuse an old hard drive. Well, basically, what to do with an old hard drive? Well, of course, you should use it again in your current system. If you have an old hard drive laying around, the best thing to do is to put it in your current computer so that you can utilize the storage space. Of course, we'll need to check if it even works. So what you will begin to do with your hard drive is to insert it in your system. Let us now insert the hard drive into the system. Turn off your computer and make sure it's turned off completely. When the computer is off, you may remove the screws and remove one side of the chassis. Inside the computer, the hard drive can be located anywhere, but they are usually located down here in this tray. Here you can see my current hard drive. It is connected with power and a SATA cable. The power is provided from your power supply. It looks like this. You need to provide a SATA cable. It looks like this. It doesn't matter if it's rated for SATA 1, 2 or 3 as long as it has this format. They all have the same speeds. What does matter, however, is the SATA connection on your motherboard. If it's SATA 3 or SATA Express, it is the faster type. However, DVD and CD players may use SATA 1 or SATA 2. If you put a hard drive to a SATA port that usually goes to a DVD, it will work fine. But it will be limited in speed, so you want to select the fastest SATA slots for hard drives which is SATA 3 or SATA Express, which is present on basically all motherboards. Usually there is some kind of large SATA bus, like here. And there we have installed the SATA cable in the SATA Express or SATA 3 slot. Just read on the motherboard and you can see the SATA rating on the provided slot. And there we have our hard drive. So, cases are usually provided with trays. So, put the hard drive in a tray, just like this. This will help a little bit with vibration and will set it securely in the case. Here we have the power. You will connect the power, just like that. Here we have the SATA cable we just inserted. We'll connect it in as well. And we push it into the tray, just like that. And there we have it. We can now close the case and proceed. Now when it started the computer you can see we got this error. Reboot and select proper boot device. Or insert boot media in selected boot device and press a key. Usually when you install a new hard drive it's fresh and never used. And in most cases it just boots but sometimes it won't. Uh, and if you have an old hard drive that may have an operative system, you will always need to go into BIOS and select the proper boot device. So, we'll turn off the computer. We'll turn it on again. Click F12 or other key provided to get to the boot menu. Now inside the boot menu, you can select the Windows Boot Manager. We'll select the Windows Boot Manager on the SSD, which is the proper drive. The other Windows Boot Manager is an operative system that already exists on the hard drive we put in. So, we'll select this one. So, we'll click Delete to go into BIOS. Different BIOSes look a little bit different, but basically we can go to BIOS Features or something uh, called Boot Options, find the Boot Options. We will have the Windows Boot Manager. We'll select that on our SSD, which is the drive we want to use. And then we'll click Save and Exit. So we have started our computer with our hard drive. But of course we had to select to start our computer from our current hard drive we are running. So that it won't start from the hard drive which is in the system. Because this old hard drive previously had an operative system installed on it. Which of course we'll need to remove because I won't use it anymore. 
Anyways, if your hard drive beeps or if it won't even spin up or if it sounds really loud and sad, it's possible that it's completely broken. And if this is the case, it's, you know, you might not actually be able to save it and reuse it. If it does spin up, however, you can probably use it again to store data on it. But of course, we'll need to do some things to be able to do that. The first thing we'll need to look at is, does it have a lot of files on it? And if it has files on it, you can browse it and see if there's anything you want to keep. Maybe you have some forgotten old files which you want to look at. And of course, you can just go into your computer and browse the hard drive if it shows up on my computer. If it doesn't show up, it might not even be formatted. Um, if it does show up, but it has, um, you know, the boot partition, uh, basically an install of a Windows, which mine had, then you will need to remove that. Um, if you don't want to save any of the data, of course, you know, first save the data and then we can clean up the drive if, if there is any data you want to save. For my part, I don't want to save any data on this, so we will go through and remove all partitions on the drive so that we can format it later. If your drive doesn't have any partition on it, you can of course go through and format it directly. So, we have installed our hard drive in the system, we have successfully booted and now we'll need to make something to be able to use it. And it's very simple. Hold Windows key and click R, so you write in run, and then you'll write in D-I-S-K, disk, M-G-M-T, dot M-S-C. Enter. Here we have it. This is the disk management tool. Remember that partitions that are usually not deletable by the disk manager are not deletable for a reason. And the reason is that they are essential for your hard drive you have your operating system on. If this, however, is a hard drive you want to use as a backup, you can go ahead and delete all partitions that are not deletable via Disk Manager. Remember that this will permanently remove the data and it will be very hard to get it back if you accidentally format a hard drive which you have information you want to save on. So, of course, back up everything if there is a chance you want to use the data sometime. This program lists your disks. This is my hard drive and this is my other hard drive that I want to use to store data on. This has a operated system installed on it as well and you can see it, it has a recovery partition and the EFI system. These can be removed but they can't be removed using disk management. However, we can of course format the regular partition, extend it, shrink it or delete the volume. But for what we need to do, we'll need to actually use command prompt. Click on your Windows key or the start menu icon and write CMD. Now you'll right click on command prompt and select run as administrator. Inside the command prompt, you will write in the following disk part. Click enter. Now you will write in list disk. Now you will get all the hard drives available. They are listed in the same order as you can see in disk management. Using disk management will also help you to recognize that this is the proper hard drive. You can also of course browse file explorer uh, using windows key and E. You'll get their explorer up if you want to know that shortcut. Now that you have made sure the disk you want to use, you simply write in select disk and the disk you want to select. I want to of course select disk 1. Now when we have selected the disk, you'll write in list partition. Now you see the following partitions. They are listed in order. And now to delete the partition you want to delete, you'll simply select the partition. To delete the recovery partition, we are going to select select partition 1. To delete the partition, write in delete partition 
override. Click enter. Make sure you spell correctly. And now the recovery partition is now deleted. To delete the EFI partition, you of course need to select it. And we already deleted the previous partition. You can see here the second partition in line because these are placed in order is of course the EFI system partition. So to delete that partition, we will write select partition two. To delete the partition, you will write delete partition override. The partition is successfully deleted, as you can see right there. And now we have deleted the system partitions. Now we might as well go to disk management, because this is the normal partition. We can delete this one. And we can select delete volume. And yes. All right, we seem to have this little 16 megabyte partition left. So we can of course write in list partition again. And of course, select partition three, delete partition override. There we go. Now we have a clean slate. The entire disk is now just like this. So we have successfully deleted all partitions of disk drive and we may now create a new volume or format it as we choose, which is fantastic. With all the data removed, we can now format the hard drive so that we can use it. If your hard drive doesn't even show up at all in Disk Manager, it's a high possibility that it's broken, especially if it also doesn't even sound or that it doesn't give you any normal life signs when you put it in the computer. You know, if it's the case, it's not much you can do with it. You could try and take it to a place which will recover the drive, but it will be very expensive and um, it's probably more cheap to buy a new hard drive than to give it to a data recovery team. Anyways, let us format this drive so we can use it because these drives seem to work completely fine now also, it doesn't have any partitions, so let's format. Anyways, let's get into it. So how do we do? What we do is we create a simple volume. That's the most best thing to do. Just click next. And here we have maximum space. You can select how much you want of it to be um, used. And I'll set this to max. But if this is an SSD, I would leave around 10% uh, unallocated to basically make the SSD both faster and live longer. But this is a regular hard drive, so we're just gonna use all the space. Then we'll click next. You can select the drive letter. You may use any one you like. We're gonna use X just for the fun of it. And then you'll just uh, click next. If you will use this uh, disk for like Mac or some very old systems, you might want to format it in XFAT, but it's kind of inefficient. So for all Windows users, please select NTFS. If you have, uh, you know, Windows 2000 or newer, I suppose. So anyways, uh, allocation size unit, you can absolutely leave this at default. The default is usually 4000, but uh, in some cases, you want to use it as lower or higher. If you have real issue of fitting all the stuff on your SSD, you might put it on minimum, but it will also then be slower. If you put it on maximum, it will be faster to browse through the hard drive, but you will be able to save less data on it if you have small files, like for example, if you will install the operating system on it. So usually, if you don't know or are not certain, just select default. If there is going to be a lot of small files on your computer, a lower allocation unit size might be better. If you're going to have large files on it, like for example, all the files are larger than one megabyte, then you might put it on max. Usually default is absolutely fine, but on this particular hard drive, I will only save movies, pictures, music. So I'm going to select it as max allocation unit size. Now this will make it slightly faster to 
to search, but it's not going to be a significant difference. So default is fine, is what I'm going to tell you. You can choose a custom name for your volume, which is fun. You can either select to perform a quick format or not. Usually quick format is absolutely fine. If you would get into some type of issue, you could try and do uh, uncheck this box and try again. Then just click next and finish. The drive is now getting formatted. It will take a little time or very fast. And here we have it. We have a, you know, beautiful hard drive. We can make new folders and store big files like a really big text, do text document like this one for example absolutely fantastic save the file we are now going to have this beautiful hard drive fantastic so there you have it that's the simple steps on how to create a new volume all right, so the disk is up and running and completely usable. If you will use this drive, you don't need to do much more. But if you instead will take the drive out again and give it to someone else or even sell it, there is one more step you wanna do. Because your data isn't really deleted on it. If this was your old hard drive, it might still be able to recover data from it with recovery software. So we'll just kinda do this little thing so we can, you know, safely give it away without anyone finding old passwords or anything you have uh, saved on the drive. Did you know that if you erase all files on a hard drive to give it or sell it to someone else, it's still possible to recover the files and have a look at them. So if you're giving away a hard drive to or like selling a hard drive to someone you don't know, you want to make sure that your files are really deleted. In this video, I'm going to show you how to really delete all files on the hard drive. To do this, we'll need a software. The software is called CC Cleaner. In the description, you can find a link that will automatically give you the pop-up to download this software. This is the free version. There is also a paid version if you want more options, but this free version is fine to do what we want. After you have installed the software, please run it. When CCleaner is on, you go to Tools. Down here you can find the Drive Wiper. Click the Drive Wiper. Now make sure you select the correct hard drive. If you are not sure, please browse the hard drive using the Explorer to make sure it's the correct one. When you are sure, check the box of what hard drive you want to erase. Here under wipe, you can see free space only. You want to change this to entire drive because we want to erase all the data. Now you can do a simple override and it will be very hard to try and reconstruct data. But if you want to make very sure it's almost impossible to recover by any type of agency or software, you could of course go with complex overwrite or even very complex overwrite. However, this will take a lot of time, but you know, if you're feeling a little bit paranoid, do that. I'm going to do a simple overwrite and click wipe. Now, because all the data on this disk will be deleted and you will not be able to recover it, it asks you to write erase in this box and click OK. Now it will start to erase all the data by writing over the data with nonsense files. This is the only way to really delete it because otherwise the files data are still there and recoverable. That is why you need to use this method to permanently erase the data securely. Let this run, go do something else and check back after a few hours. And there we have it, the drive wipe completed successfully. Now I only written it over in one pass, but as said, if you want to be even more sure it's impossible to recover it, you might mo do multiple overwrites. In any case, now the disk is um, completely clean slate and written over and you can now safely give this away or sell it or whatever. 
Now you may be wondering what kind of state this drive is in. And there is a simple little software which you can check the health of the hard drive. So let's just do that. Well, in this tutorial I'm going to show you. It is very easy, but you do need a software. You can find a link in the description. It's called Crystal Disk Info. There are several versions. Uh, the standard versions is useful for most people and the Shizuku and Kurei versions are kind of um, weeby versions, which of course we will go with. After downloading the file you can then install the software. It is just to accept the terms and go through with the installment. When you are done, you can launch Crystal Disk Info. And here we have it. The software is now complete. If you chose one of the Wii versions, you can of course change the theme. Uh, why wouldn't you want that? <laughs> Anyways, here you can see the different hard drives. And to be sure you have the latest information, go to Function and click Rescan. It will now rescan the hard drives and get the information from them. Here we can browse between my drives. This is my SSD internally and you can see a lot of different data here. However, what you only need to look for is the health status. So basically, if the health is good, you don't need to worry. You can see like write error rate and stuff like that down here. And of course, um, all drives do eventually you know sometimes make small errors but if it's below the threshold uh, that is identified by this health status it should be absolutely fine so you can look through your different drives here and see how they look if they all are good or if they are um, yellow or even red if they are yellow or red you should definitely back up the data and consider to change it the c drive is my internal system drive then I have a secondary drive, which I recently picked up from an old computer, wiped and placed in my computer. So I needed to check that this disk was okay, and it is, and so I can use it. Then I also have my external drive, which is here, which is also completely fine. Alright, hopefully your hard drive is up and running perfectly and, uh, well, enjoy your new storage space. If uh, it was a little bit in the yellow, you know, uh, don't save too important data of it, but it would probably not fail too soon. It just might, you never know. If it's red though, be a little bit careful. Um, in any case, hope the drive works well for you and um, have fun with it. Hope it works for you a long time and, uh, well, there you saved some money probably now that you can reuse this hard drive. Well anyways, thanks for watching this video. Do subscribe and like this video if it helped you. And I'll see you next week. This is Jim Odesen, Total Nerdy Channel, signing out.